today we will show you how the Slavyanka powered Bajaj Maxima Tuk Tuk made it to the finish line of Solar Race 2023 across Kazakhstan. Since June the 11th, the team was on the road, which became a continuous series of unforeseen obstacles for our participants. The journey lasted 24 days, a week longer than the solar race should have lasted. The team made it to the end, following all the rules of the competition. They tested the motor and will soon share the results of this challenge. All along the way, the team members were stoically silent about what prevented them from demonstrating the best result. The guys took their main task, testing the motor in the most difficult conditions, very seriously and responsibly. And even after the finish, they talk about the problems in a rather reserved fashion. And they are ready to take responsibility even for something that did not depend on them. Let's see what the tuk-tuk achieved in the final days of the journey. After the winner of the Sun Car race, Daniil Vetredi, was determined, unexpectedly for our team, the productive research stage began. It was the 19th day of the tuk-tuk journey. The Sunmobile continued to show a steady speed of movement. The team steadily overcame more than 100 km per day. In Shimkent, there was a small meeting with fans, where the tuk-tuk was called a sunmobile with wings. And after that, the team traversed the landscape with steep climbs. According to pilot Vladimir, who were crawling in first gear. It was important to keep the eco mode for the purity of the experiment and not to increase the traction. Recuperation was applied at 40 km per hour on a downhill slope. The tuk-tuk passed this test perfectly. Recuperation slowed down well even on steep slopes. There was no need to use the brakes. 114 km were covered during the day. However, there were more mountains ahead. The team, in addition to solar energy, recharged themselves with flatbreads and boiled corn which they bought at the Shimkent market. At sunset we passed Aksu Zhabaklinsky Reserve, the first and oldest reserve in Kazakhstan. This place was worth seeing. In the reserve there are now several thousand species of insects, as well as rare reptiles and amphibians, which are listed in the Red Book. This is the place where the team spent the night that time better than a five-star hotel. When you go separately from the main group of participants, well, you get to go as if you are alone. It's really hard. You don't quite understand if what you are doing is relevant. You're going alone. The situation is a bit confusing. Well, it is psychologically hard. The next day, the team left at 9.30, with a 100% charge. There were more long climbs, on which the battery charge is used up a lot. The tuk-tuk had one more test to pass in the mountainous terrain. At the end of the longest steep descent, Vladimir drove constantly on recuperation. The charge level was kept at about 1.5 kW, and the percentage of charge was 97. This was the descent that everyone in the race feared. The tuk-tuk passed that test as well. No dangerous situation arose. The team even shared a life hack with their subscribers. You should not approach this descent with a 100% charge, in order to recuperate the maximum charge at a speed of less than 40 km per hour. That day the team passed Taraz. 133 km were covered during the day. Let's take rest into the history of the tuk-tuk. Why did the result that the sun car showed on the test fail to materialize during the race? 
The tuk-tuk was taken away from the owners just before the start of the race. The operation of electric vehicles implies a certain culture. No overcharging. Discharging at least once a month. In storage, the charge should be 40-60%. The cylinder has oxidized because it was parked outside all the winter and nobody used it. Oleg Kovalev, the team mechanic, met Vladimir, the future pilot, for the first time on April the 12th. Vladimir offered to race on a tuk-tuk at the first meeting. Vladimir had already been watching Nikita's dark face videos for over three years, back when he was just planning to ride long distances. Vladimir already wanted to race in 2022, but he could not reach the people as Tien. In April, Oleg got approval from Andrei Lobov and other leaders. Oleg and Vladimir arrived in Obninsk on May the 5th and worked till June the 2nd, the three of them, together with Dmitry. Participation in the race was agreed quickly. But there was very little time to prepare the tuk-tuk. It took only a month to update and prepare it. Surprisingly, the tuk-tuk was still able to cover the entire course even after long previous use. However, it is better to prepare for the next races for a longer period of time. Preliminary tests will allow to avoid some breakdowns that the team found and fixed already during the race, during the first week of it. We express our respect to the Tuk Tuk team. They did not share the story publicly until the finish line and took full responsibility for the Tuk Tuk's failures on themselves. On July the 1st, it was possible to hit the road at 8.30 am with a 100% charge. The speedometer at that moment showed 2,880 km. More than 80% of the road had been covered. Our team still had about 500 km to Almaty, when two more participants of the race finished. Danik and Gani. At that moment, our pilot Vladimir recorded a historic moment. 3,000 km on the tuk-tuk's speedometer. The team recharged themselves with black corn, an exotic product that can only be grown in very warm regions. Besides, wheat flatbread with honey and cheerful people the team met on the way were also a great support. During the day, 142 km were covered. The team spent the night on the bank of a ditch. The conversation is always very original. The locals always smile, come up, ask questions. Is it electric? I say yes. Does it run on the sun? I say yes. Then they say, where are you coming from? I say from Uralsk. They ask, where are you going? I say to Almaty. Where are you from? I say from St. Petersburg. How did you get this thing from St. Petersburg to Uralsk? I say, actually, it's from Obdinsk. I am from St. Petersburg, and we brought it from Obdinsk by Gazelle minivan by delivery service. Well, that's basically very original conversations that we have almost every day. On July the 2nd, the start was a little later, at 8.55 but with a 100% charge. The team passed the village of Kainar in Jambil region. They observed the transportation of huge blades for a wind farm. The team saw the famous Kordai Pass between the Kindiktas and Jadijal mountain ranges. It is especially difficult for vehicles in winter. Our team reached its foot at sunset. The view on the page with horses is one more impression, for the sake of which it is worth to make a trip. The team stopped for the night at an altitude of 1,233 meters. 183 kilometers were left to the finish line, the team covered 127 kilometers during the day. On July the 3rd, the team was already aiming for the finish line. In the morning they were making predictions, will they finish today or tomorrow? 
the driver of the technical support car had to go home to his children. So the team wanted to let him go as soon as possible. Besides, the whole team dreamed of a short rest before the trip to the gathering point of races in Almaty. Nevertheless, when climbing to the pass, the battery died. And in the morning there was dense cloud cover. That's why they could not recharge quickly, they only left at 10 a.m. At 15.44, Vladimir noted that there were less than 100 kilometers left to Almaty. This added to the positive emotions. The repair of the A2 highway slowed down the tuk-tuk. But we hope that next year, when the repair is over, they will make a lot of charging sites for solar cars. So the team did not reach the finish line on that day. They spent the night in the field in tents, about 70 kilometers from Almaty. During the day, 102 kilometers were covered. On July the 4th, the team started at 9.30, and the finish line was already there at 2 p.m. Dear friends, our Tuk Tuk team finished at the Ice Palace Elmati Arena. And the pilot's first dream came true. Vladimir dreamed to be allowed into a fitness club, where he could have a normal shave and wash for the first time from the start of the race. So the team is back in good shape. And thanks their fans, friends and everyone who supported them on this difficult and unpredictable journey.